Welcome back. So today, actually, I have a, uh, I have a fun one. Uh, I'm going to take my old GameCube that I've had for uh, at least a couple years, uh, and we are going to put a, an HDMI port into it. Uh, this one actually doesn't support it. Uh, you need one that has a component um, output on it. This only has AV. This is what's known as a DOL101 uh, revision. The motherboard is. This case actually came from a uh, 001 revision of the one that has the component out port. Uh, apparently years ago I had that and I thought replacing it with a 101 motherboard was a good idea for some reason. Uh, I don't entirely know why. Um, so I have that in this casing and we've been, I've been using it ever since. Uh, so there's a few things we have to do here. I have a 001 motherboard, which has the components out port on here. Uh, this one actually is broken. I bought it because um, it said that it had function. It was functional, except that the disk drive was quote unquote missing. It is quite literally missing the motor, which is like the biggest part. Um, but the motherboard didn't work at all um, for whatever reason. It didn't. So I wound up actually buying the motherboard that's sitting in here now. So you can see there's one in it. Uh, that works. I tested it because, to be honest, if I didn't test it before I did this, I wouldn't be making this video because there'd be more work to do. Um, so there's a few things we have to do. We have to take this apart. I'm actually going to mix and match parts from both casings. Uh, the jewel on that one is a little nicer. The lid here is scratched, so I want that lid, but everything else is probably going to stay the same because this is much nicer. And then we need, like, the back port that has the cutout for it. So a lot of mixing and matching. Um, this is a lot that has to go into it. So we need that, right? We need this, this 001 motherboard, not this one, but the other one. Uh, we need this uh, FPGA board. This one is known as, this is a um, Pluto 2X HD, I think is the formal name of it. Um, basically it's an off the shelf FPGA adapter. Uh, that has an HD, it takes um, component, converts it into HDMI through the use of the FPGA, and then uh, it does that, and by extension, people have made this work with GameCubes through a series of these pins on here, so you can connect to the existing component ports, and it you know, works here. It wasn't made for the GameCube, but it works with the GameCube. It also will work for the Wii, requires a slightly different uh, set of instructions uploaded to it, but uh, I ordered the one with the GameCube, so uh, I will have that linked in the description. The other thing we're going to need is this flex ribbon from uh, Helder's Tech or Helder's Game Tech. Uh, this makes it easier for us to solder uh, the boards. We aren't running a bunch of wires from here to the motherboard. Instead, we uh, solder this onto here. Uh, this makes it much easier to install. So we need that. And then the last thing is a uh, adapter to hold or a bracket to hold everything in place. I just 3D printed this beforehand several grams of filament it was like 10 cents worth of your standard uh 22 dollar roll of kilo uh kilogram roll of filament so super cheap and i believe that uh helder's tech also sells this with the ribbon cable if you need it so if you don't have a printer um they offer it this is to come apart we will mix and match this later but this is like the last step because all we have to do is basically stick it in the mother uh, in the casing we have to I'm going to use the broken motherboard as an example. We have to unsolder all of this, and then we need to put the cable on, secure everything. The hardest part is basically taking this off. Um, and then we also need to cut the metal shielding that would go around the disk drive. Um, that'll be a fun one to figure out because I don't have metal cutting tools, so uh, that'll be fun to figure out. But, uh, you know, we'll make it work. We have to take this apart. It's already apart, as you can see by the screws that have been here. Uh, because I, like I said, tested everything and then figured I needed to buy another motherboard. So we've got everything we need to keep. This will get washed. I'll we'll probably actually wash everything. Um, that'll go away. The disk drive I can keep as parts. Um, I didn't mean to pull it off. It needs to come off, but I didn't mean to pull it off. Uh, so pull from the back. The thing I never liked about these 001 boards, um, it'll be story time here in a second. Uh, I never liked that they had this separate 
power regulator on the bottom. Um, I used to, many years ago, be very into portableizing of consoles, you know, taking them apart, cutting them down, and uh, making them smaller and handheld run off batteries. Fun hobby. Um, for a high schooler who didn't like spending a whole lot of money on things, I would buy the 101 motherboards because I wouldn't have to re, uh, I wouldn't have to move around the power regulator. Uh, and that's why I've always preferred the 101. All this, all this is coming out. I'm just getting this done now so we don't have to do it later. So probably will not need this. We have one that works. Might need the cable, but we have one. Um, and I'm actually going to leave all this kind of in place right now so that we can test things. We have to take off this port, something that I have never been a fan of doing uh, because it's a lot of tiny little solder points, like so. So the few ways we can probably do this, uh, my hot air station is probably the best but I'm gonna get these grounding pins off because they will probably absorb a lot of the heat. So to do that, we're actually just gonna use standard solder wick. Okay, yeah, I'm getting my hot air station. It's a lot of, it's a lot of solder. About 400 degrees Celsius. We're going to heat and uh, try to pull it down. Oh, it's coming, there we go. This board very much needs to cool off before we can continue. Uh, I don't want to risk breaking any pads or anything. Um, I can't even really touch it without it like, burning. So electrical compressed air. All right, so we have that portion done. Now we need to prep the board itself. So we need our flex cable and the glue itself. And we're going to want the adapter. I have here um, a M2 screw, uh, six millimeters in length. That's just gonna, that's what's used to keep the board in place. So it just slots in like so. All right, so it sits in like this. I'm gonna use the screw to keep it in place. One for the final install and two for our prep work here real quick. And then we need our cable that will sit on it <clears throat> like so. All right, so we're basically working off of it like this. It's a tad odd to solder. Um, so I've got some tape to hold in place, brand new, brand new roll. I'm going to tack in a few points um, to make this a little bit easier. I'm trying to tin my tip. Just use that. Uh, it didn't work, so we're going to do this. Like so, and I'm going to hold this slightly while I... Align it, and then we can start tacking in a few more spots. I'm not too worried about getting it flat right now. Um, like obviously it will need to be flat, uh, but I just want the board in place so I don't need the tape. That should be enough to hold it in place. Feel the tape.
Now I can use my spudger as a bit of a tip so we can heat up some of these spots, keep it flat, and then let it uh, cool back down. Like so. Do the same up here. Now that it's flat, we can solder. But I'm gonna double check the pinout is right, so I don't have to undo it. So I did double check my pinout. Um, on Helder's Tech website, he's got a picture of the pinout. Does not line up with what I have here. Uh, not to say that it's wrong. I believe the difference is, is that I have a newer revision of the board. This one is USB-C, which I believe is for programming it. Um, but I know the guy doesn't call for it. Uh, so the one that they're using is old -er. Just different, right? It doesn't mean it's old or bad or anything. Um, I will continue with what I've got because from what I can tell, it still lines up, um, especially with the help of um, Macho Nacho video, who I'm also going to link in the description below, uh, who I'm kind of referencing for some of this. Uh, lines up with this. He's got the other revision too, but it lines up with what he's doing. So I'm going to follow through with that. So we're going to finish soldering these points uh, then get this on the motherboard and we'll test it, make sure it works. Oh, and the uh, the ribbon cables have also changed too. These have full circle pads on it. The ones in both videos uh, do not. And they're like half moons, kind of like this one is that I'm soldering right now. So they're all different. So that should now be in a state that we can put it onto the board. So this comes out. And it says to fold. Uh, I'm a little scared to fold it, to be honest. Um, but we should be okay. I'm trying to very, very gently crease it along these lines. I'm not trying to bend it like a piece of paper. I'm not trying to actually fold. I'm just trying to get a bit of that curve into it so it's easier to... Um, put down. Right, I'm going to attack this left side here with a bit of solder. All right, it's not attached to anything. I've got some tape to hold it in place, but we're just going to press it down. Run it over so it's down. And we're going to do the same with this side over here. I've got some on my tip. So just press down. Solder it so that the anchor points are in place. I'm gonna remove the tape because it's actually in my way. And now we can go through and solder all of these points. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the board. I'm gonna get some solder on a pad and heat it and use my pry tool as a flatten device thing uh, and get it pushed flat down. So here is where things are going to differ slightly compared to other guides. Um, typically what you're going to do is you're just going to put it all back together. Um, but because I need to swap basically the shell, uh, we're not done. But I'm going to test this first to make sure that it all works. Because if it doesn't, uh, I'm not going to waste my time doing everything just yet. This post comes out. Oh, this post comes out because otherwise it gets in the way of the bracket. So we're just going to flip it. And honestly, good practice run because this is the shell I don't care about. 
a little odd because the bracket's gonna like push in against the cable and I don't really like that. <laughs> I know it's probably how it's supposed to go, but it feels very wrong. Um, so we're gonna grab some of these screws that we had from when we took this apart. Because I definitely did that on camera. Um, get everything secured. There's a lot of unfortunate twisting happening here uh, that I'm not exactly a fan of. All right, so it's colliding here. You can kind of see on this dotted line here. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly lined up. Like, I didn't remove the wrong thing or put this in the wrong spot, and I pulled this off of printables. So we know this fits and everything, so... I just, I have to put it like this and then twist it. And that's not how it's supposed to go. It needs to be over like just a couple of millimeters. Right. Oh, whoops. Right, it's like not lined up. I have to do twisting and stuff. It's um, not very comfortable to do, and I don't want to break this cable. Something like that. Now we just need to pull five volts. Guess who forgot to put in a cable? So to get five volts, we have to pull it from right here. This one pin off the power regulator. So, very simply, I've got my, uh, what's this, 28 gauge, I think, 24 gauge, right? Certainly enough for five volts. I'm gonna shoot for something like that. All right, now we just need to tack one more cable for this control pad. Right about there. We'll control to this pad right here. I'll zoom on that as needed. Um, I don't have anything nearly small enough. Typically, you'd use something like uh, 28, 30, or even smaller wire. Um, I don't have that. Good thing if you have it on hand, uh, take a really old Ethernet cable that you don't use. Uh, Take the uh, terminations off and use the cable inside of that. It's great for signal wire like that. I just don't have any cat cables that I want to uh, sacrifice. So we're gonna solder this end here. Like so give it some solder. Okay. And we're going to route it this way. Like I said, we are going to this pin right here, right below this hollow one. It's not actually hollow, but you get my point. Solder that in place. I'll get another strip of capped on tape. So I do believe that is it. Um, we're gonna test this. So to do that, I need to do a few things. The heat sink needs to go on, even if, even if I am just turning this on for a brief second to make sure we have video. Um, I won't screw anything in place. 
but it's on there. All right, just so we don't immediately uh, burn anything up. I'm not gonna plug in the controllers or the disk drive. I just want video. So I had video, which is good. I know I didn't show it on video, but this is also a test setup at the moment. So now we move on to putting it back together. We've got <clears throat> my GameCube. So this has all my stuff on it. We've got things we can take out. You know, as I sit here contemplating why I have yet to buy an electric screwdriver for myself, uh, I realize this is the most GameCubes I've had in one household in my entire life. Including this working one I've got here, the one we just put HDMI on. Yeah, technically the broken one, because at least it turns on. And then my uh, Game Sphere. I've got four GameCubes in my house right now. Uh, also a great test to see if... Uh, I've always been curious how that YouTube thing works for the like, oh, look at the video in the top right-hand corner. Because uh, I've yet to ever see a way to put a video there manually. So very interesting. Um, so I will say, you know, haha, -ha, go watch the Game Sphere video. Um, you don't have to. I'm curious to see if it shows up in the corner. That's the whole reason I'm saying that. So we've got down to where we need just for some testing purposes. We've got this drive we're going to be putting in and the shield of the O of revision A, right? O01. A uh, little different. We probably want to use this one because this has the cutout for the component, sorry, composite port in the middle. This one has it on the left. We have the HMI, so we should use this one. So, uh, I think the well, best approach would be <clears throat> Best approach would be obviously um, cutting it with something. I don't have that. Uh, none of my woodworking tools, I think. Actually, you know, all woodworking tools can basically cut aluminum to some extent. Um, but I'm not going to go pull out a circular saw to do this. So let us. I'm going to go from here, basically all the way to here. Um, and I am going to. Fatigue it. That should work. How's that fit? Nah, we should take that off. This was starting to hit the, this is gonna hit the board, so that should come off. Like so, we have this. How's that fit? Good. All right, so no contact anywhere. It's basically what we want okay now we can finish tearing down both game cubes a uh, few things need cleaning one is this metal power regulator right that side that side needs cleaning it's gross um I'm gonna probably clean this metal too while I'm at it. And do, do, do. this back piece. Otherwise, everything else is coming from the other cleaner GameCube I've had for years. Okay, so well, it turns out when you uh, record in 4K 60 FPS and um, don't uh, don't stop for an hour and a half. Uh, I will eat through all of the storage space I had on my phone. So um, I'm glad I caught it without doing anything, but it's fine. Um, so we cleaned everything. You can see here much, much cleaner. Uh, I'll try and pull up a before and after on it because it was, it was really gross. Uh, it turns out the screw layout changed between the revisions. So I can't get these screws in for whatever reason, uh, which shouldn't be a big deal but just a you know mildly interesting fact uh and then i also swapped to the longer power cable over to the uh uh power button that we're using the one that's cleaner and a little nicer so that's screwed in 
we can now put that in. We'll put this bottom shielding in as well. Oh, and we also need to cut this new housing, new us. Like so. It's at least favorite part. We're going to take some of our screws. Dish drive in place. All right, let's fly through getting the rest of this back together and we can call this done. So I'm not gonna bother. I was gonna replace the jewel, but now I don't wanna bother doing it. So put on the lid, make sure everything lines up and uh, screw it back together. do power and then on the back with our very slick little 3d printed bracket take the hdmi port plug it in like so and then uh excuse the hand camera work turn it on and then uh video and sound right Okay, so we are, uh, we're powered. We're using the HDMI cable through here. This on. And uh, we're on screen. So if we hold, try and do this one-handed. L, R. Oh, good, good gosh. There you go. So this. L, R, X, and Y. All at the same time, it will pull up the on the screen display. And then from here, we can use the D-pad uh, and X is to select Y goes back. From here, we can change. So if you need to turn on that advanced uh, DVI mode to get sound, it's under output settings, uh, enhance DVI mode, turn it on, uh, fix my audio issue. So that's all I have to do. Uh, and now we are running this over HDMI so I can go plug this in my home AVR and uh, play all my games without an adapter of some kind, which is quite nice, actually. So that is the uh, GC Pluto 2X HDMI mod uh, with the Helder Tech uh, flex cable, which made this super easy. Uh, I'm very happy with the mod. Um, I'm actually very excited to go set it up out in my living room and uh, play some of my older games that I've been wanting to play for a while without needing to go buy either an expensive adapter or have to deal with composite uh, in today's age. So uh, thank you so much for watching. It's actually been very fun. A couple hours of work would have gone a lot quicker if I wasn't filming, um, as most of these things tend to do. But very fun mod. Uh, first time I've worked on a GameCube in years, to be honest, aside from the, that game sphere. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer them. I'll have descriptions to all the other uh, links. I'll have links in the description for all of the uh, other guides and the stuff used here. Um, in case anybody would like to try this themselves. Um, but this whole thing is my own little video journal for myself. So let me know if you've got any questions. And uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and come by for the next one.